especially now I'm going to talk, I'm going to weigh in on the Don Sterling controversy, although it's not really too controversial. I mean, everybody is ready to hang the guy uh, because of his racist rant uh, that was recorded by his uh, girlfriend, uh, mistress, sugar baby, I don't know, arm candy, I don't know what, what you call her, uh, but the young lady who uh, secretly recorded uh, this private argument conversation that Don Sterling had with her. And, of course, it's an outrage now. He's been banned for life from the F uh, NBA, and they want to force him to sell uh, his team, the L.A. Clippers. Um, and so I listened to the tape. I didn't listen to the whole thing until just the other day. I wanted to hear it. It's all, and I'm not even going to play any sound cuts from it. I mean, any, you want, go listen to it. It's all over the Internet, right? There are millions of people have heard it, right? And I listened to this 10-minute tape, and I'm going to tell you, he doesn't say anything racist on that tape. Now, maybe he is a racist, but if you just listen to that tape, it doesn't sound like it. And I'm not, I'm not kidding. If you think I'm wrong, you know, call me out on it. But here's what the guy says. Right? On numerous occasions, his girlfriend is saying, why don't you like minorities? He says, I love minorities. He says, why are you a racist? I'm not a racist. He says, why do you want me not to be with minorities? I don't. He says, be with them all you want. I, I like Bernard. They're great. Hang out with them. Pal around with them. Have sex with them. I don't care. Spend all your time with them. It doesn't matter to me. And she, he, you know, he, he talks about Magic Johnson. She brings him up. He's, he's a great guy. Admire him. You know, he he's, has nothing but positive things to say about minorities and blacks. And every time she says she tries to bait him to get him to say something negative, he won't do it. He doesn't use the N-word. He blacks. He's using the politically correct word. I mean, he's not saying African-American, but how many of us would use the word African-American if there wasn't a camera in front of us? Right. No. How many people in normal conversation are going to say African-American? Right. You're going to say black. Right. But he's not using any uh, racial you know, words. And what is the argument about? What is what is he saying? He is basically saying, look, I, you, you've got a lot of male black friends. You know, I got no problem with that. Right? I got nothing against black people. I hang out with them myself. I spend a lot of time with them. Right. He says, but do me a favor. Keep it quiet. Right. I, I don't want you to put all these photographs of yourself uh, on Instagram and I don't want you to bring them to the games because I'm getting phone calls from people who are her, who are giving, making fun of me. I don't want to have to answer the phone every time you send out an Instagram, somebody calling me uh, to razz me about my girlfriend or my black girlfriend or my girlfriend with the black eyes. Now, he's not saying that he has any prejudice at all. He's saying that it's a culture, it's a society I can't do anything about. I can't help what other people think. Now, maybe he's admitting that he has some racist friends who are teasing him about his girlfriend either being black because she's half black. And maybe he's like, well, you know, why don't you hang out? You know, if you're hanging out with black people, it makes you look more black. And I, don't, and I keep getting all these phone calls from people who are harassing me. So the question is, who are these people that are calling up Don Sterling, making fun of him for dating a black girl? Or maybe what he doesn't like is the fact that they're making fun of him because they're assuming that she's having sexual relations with these black guys. And, you know, maybe they're, you know, you've got the, the mystique of the sexual prowess of the black male. And maybe they're teasing him about that. And maybe, I don't know, maybe he doesn't want to deal with it. Maybe he doesn't want to throw it back at his friend's face and say, hey, what are you, a racist? You know, uh, I don't know. He, the guy's 80 years old. His friends are probably 80 years old. They grew up in a, a different era. You know, the guess who's coming to dinner. You know, if you haven't seen that movie, Sidney Poitier, um, Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn, it's a great movie. Uh, but, you know, back in the, in the day, in the 60s, 50s, 60s, there was a stigma, even if you weren't a racist. You know, interracial couples were still, you know, it it, 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 it wasn't something that, you know, that it was, that, you know there, there, there was controversy. In that now it's not the same today you know but these are the 80 year old guy right so it, it, the only thing that bothers him is what other people think so he's saying look I got nothing against blacks I got nothing against minorities I don't want you to hate them I don't want you to be a racist I want you to privately 
be with, you know, have relationships with, with people of any color, any race. That doesn't sound like a racist. If the guy were actually a racist, remember, this is a private conversation, an argument with his girlfriend. He doesn't know he's being recorded. He would be saying, yeah, oh, I, I hate those black people. And he wouldn't call them black people. He would use the N-word. I don't want you anywhere around them. I don't want them touching you, right? That makes me sick, you know? I mean, he didn't say any of that. He didn't say anything negative at all about blacks or minorities. Everything he said was positive. Yet it shows you how low the bar is now because now this is, he's an awful, horrible racist because he doesn't want his girlfriend who's half black anyway. He's dating someone who's half black. How racist can he be? He doesn't want her posting all these pictures on Instagram with other guys, other black guys, and his friends are teasing him about it. That's it? This, I mean, imagine if you, uh, what, what, what would we do to a real racist? If someone actually said, racist things what would we just drag him out in the street and beat the crap out of him and kill him is that what we would do i mean it, what an overreaction i mean i'd be embarrassed you know if you're going to make a big deal about this right then what what about real actual racism that's going on now maybe 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 he is i don't know him personally i mean if there are now people are coming out saying oh he's a bad guy i don't know he's a bad guy or a good guy i listened to that tape though and it's not the awful horrible thing that people want to pretend that it is. That is the fact, right? Go listen to it if, you know, you think I'm making this stuff up and listen to what the guy is actually saying and, and, and what is bothering him. And you can understand and you can see, look how far we've, we've come as a culture, right? He's just concerned about what other people are going to think about his black girlfriend. It's, he's not the racist, right? Because he's dating a black girl. Or, a, you know, you know, and, you know, how many people who are criticizing him are dating black women? I mean, it's, it's pretty still pretty rare. I mean, you look at interracial marriages back in 1960, I think maybe about one percent of the marriages, if that were interracial. It's still very small. It might be three or four percent. So it's still not a lot. There's still mostly people are dating and marrying within their own race, even though we have so much more tolerance now than we did back then. People still tend to date. Does that mean if you're if you're a white guy and you're dating white girls, are you are you racist? You know, but also what this shows you to me is all of this stuff about how we need these anti-discrimination laws is, you know, it's bad economics, but people always say to me, well, Peter, you know, if we repeal these civil rights laws, you know, all these restaurants are going to have signs, no blacks allowed. What are you kidding me? Look what happens. This guy has a private conversation where the subject of race comes up and, you know, he's, he loses his he's banned for life from the NBA. I mean, could you imagine if he tried to hang a sign out in front of the stadium where the Clippers play, you know, whites only, no blacks allowed? I mean, I mean nobody could do that. There any... You find you 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 find one restaurant, one store that puts up a sign, no blacks allowed. It's going to be national news. They're going to they're going to come down on on that. They'd be out of business in a heartbeat. So um, yeah, I mean, and this is public stigma. So I mean, nobody is going to want to be uh, publicly outed as a racist. So we don't need all of these laws. But the thing is, everybody has to be outraged. What really bothers me is that in order to prove that you're not a racist, you got to come down on this guy like, 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 like a hammer. You got to, you got to show how much of a racist you're not by, by acting outraged and completely offended and disgusted by what he had to say. Instead of understanding, hey, he's an old guy, he's 80 years old, maybe he's a little insecure, maybe he's a little jealous, he doesn't want his friends harassing him. Hey, isn't it great how far we've come? Because today, people in their 30s or 20s or even 50 would think nothing about having a black girlfriend. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it, we've, we've progressed. But people that are that old, they grew up in a different era, their friends grew up in a different era. Cut them a little slack. Give them a little break. Especially, especially since this is a private conversation. He's not giving a speech. And it's an argument. How many, think of all the things people say when they argue with their girlfriends. Can you imagine, can you imagine if NBA players' girlfriends taped their con conversations, taped their arguments? Could you imagine all of the homophobic, all of the sexist, all of the racist statements they would make every day? I mean, could you imagine? And then what, what's going to happen if one of these girls, you know, and these uh, basketball players, they've got a girl in every city. You know, there's more 
illegitimate children of NBA players, and there are NBA players. Can you imagine the conversations that they could get on tape? And what would they do if they catch one of these NBA players saying something racist or sexist or homophobic? Are they going to kick him out of the NBA and ban him for life if they said it in an argument with their girlfriend? Because you know what? If they don't do it, it's a double standard. They got to kick everybody out now for making any kind of statement that anybody could take offense to. You got to ban them for life. You know, I, I tell you, I'd be scared if I was an NBA player because I, I would want to frisk every girl that I took out on a date because, you know, these girls are going to be thinking, now, wait a minute, I'm going to get a tape recording of this guy because, I'm, you know, because I'm gonna, if he says anything, He's going to have to pay me a ton of money because I'm taking this thing over to TMZ and they'll pay me a ton of money because now that they've established a precedent, you catch any one of these guys making an offensive statement privately, they got to kick them out or it's a double standard. 855-4SHIFT. Let me know what you think. If you disagree with me, if you heard this tape, if you think he's actually making racist statements, let me know. We got a break. We'll be right back. 855-4SHIFT is the Peter Schiff Show. You know, meanwhile, while everybody is focusing on their feigned outrage over the private conversation uh, between Don Sterling and uh, his gold digger girlfriend, uh, meanwhile, the real problems uh, in the black community are completely ignored and swept under the rug. I mean, I think the left loves these kind of controversies so they can all rather, you know, gather around it and feign outrage and just like, you know, uh, but ignore the overwhelming larger problems that are real and that are not the result of racism, but the result of bad policies coming out of the very people that claim to be trying to help uh, minorities and blacks. And they are the ones responsible for the demise of the black family and the horrible state of affairs. Uh, the, you know, lower, you know, the, 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 the relatively low standard of living uh, that a lot of the minorities have relative to the overall population. This is because of government programs, not because of racism.